When the Rana Plaza complex collapsed in Dakar, Bangladesh, fashion revolution was born. We believe that that's too many people to lose on one day. All 1,134 people who were killed did not die in vain, nor the other 2,500 people who were injured. We are Fashion Revolution South Africa. From a legal perspective, um, most of South Africa's clothing workers are women and they are single mothers who are uh, the sole breadwinners of their family. And so the unions have pushed for increased wages in South Africa. The South African Clothing and Textile Workers Union, SACTU, is the largest trade union in the clothing, textile, leather and footwear industry in South Africa and globally with nearly 100,000 members. Despite job losses, SACTU has remained well organized with about 80% of the workers in the sector belonging to the union. The union has upheld its tradition as a fighting union, yet it engages employers and government in dialogue and has made significant gains on sourcing locally and pushing back on trade liberalization. I've always wanted to start my own business and run my own company. Uh, it's something I've been passionate about since I was much younger. Uh, my father was an entrepreneur and he really inspired me. He was a businessman. And yeah, it was something that I've always wanted to do. I've also, the reason it was manufacturing is because I come from corporate, but I come from a buying office. So I've worked for many uh, big retailers. So I was just exposed more to that sector and I understand it more. So it just made sense that the business that I did start would be similar to what I was already doing. Well, uh, firstly, we make sure that the environment is nice. There's lots of natural light. Uh, we make sure that you know, people aren't sitting here till midnight with ridiculous deadlines. Uh, yes, the work needs to be done, but at the same time, you know, people, there needs to be a nice work-life balance, which I think it's very important. And having work for big retailers uh, or big companies, you know, it's very important that you spend time and you take your job seriously, and then also you spend time with your family, because at the end of the day, that is what matters the most. Fashion designers are at the heart and center of having the power to bring about change. The Stella McCartney brand is now synonymous with eco-fashion. It was the first luxury fashion brand that was anti-leather, feather and fur, and the first to design fashion that is both effortlessly chic and environmentally friendly. We wanted to chat to local designers and find out what their approach to eco-fashion was like. So deciding to start a fashion label is not is a very big part of it. Yes, is trying to f start a role model business, but it's also celebrating the heritage that we have in South Africa of producing beautiful garments that we're losing very fast. All in the interest of looking at how we narrow the gap between rich and poor, and a big part of that is creating jobs and creating economic opportunity. But very few businesses are focused on more than just profit and more than just short-term profit. And I wanted to create a business that could be an inspirational role model business that would be able to be both profitable but also be economically, socially and environmentally impactful. We need to start making people realize that they need to start being sustainable with all their choices and clothing is, is also one of them that you need to, if you're going to eat organic then, you know, be sustainable and you, know, you have to think about things from a more, more holistic point of view. Any sort of commitment that you can make, whether it's um, ecological or sustainable or um, ethical or socially responsible, all of any sort of commitment you can make is, is important. And then you can take a little step further and actually look at the, the clothing factory where, where clothes are produced. How, how, how do they look at the at ecological or environmental, um, you know, what's their standpoint there? And we believe in sustainable future for fashion and we believe in spreading the word and, um, and educating the consumer. We were in London for six years and we wanted to come home and start our own fashion brand together. And we felt like there was no alternative for us but to turn to our community and to uplifting our community. 
from the beginning of our brand, we made sure that everything down to our fabrics, we had a good connection with our suppliers. So we use a lot of hemp fabrics, so we have a great connection with our supplier, Tony Budden. Um, and not only is it just a supplier-designer relationship, but we want to work with our suppliers to better the um, the process. I think for us, being heavily involved in our supply chain is important. We need to know where our materials and our fabrics are coming from and we need that transparency and to work together. So whether it's working with our hemp suppliers for our organic hemp fabrics or working with our leather suppliers, our printing which is all done eco, it's really a process that we go through to make sure that we're ticking those boxes and that we have that relationship to kind of strengthen our pillars to work together to produce an ethical and sustainable and where possible organic collection. I mean in South Africa we are very limited with organic and ethical so it's really been an interesting process to find those suppliers and I think that process has made our um, brand that much more rewarding at the end of the day. Mungo and Jemima is the brainchild of Kirsty Bannerman and Marion Park Ross. The store has been the home for proudly South African designers to showcase their ranges since 2008. We select designers to represent and then it's up to those designers to stock their rails but we do go through a process with those designers and ensure that they're designers that we feel really align with the Mungo and Jemima brand. For me, it's about jobs. We did a little study a few years ago amongst the designers in our shop and asked everyone to list how many people they either employ directly or touch an, in an employment way, like outsource to another factory. And it was really a huge number. Out of our selection of designers, it was maybe 60 to 70 people who who are getting work because they are small local designers producing in this country and I feel it's so important and you know the women that work for me in my factory feed kids because they have jobs and without these small designers there won't be jobs. We are heavily influenced by the media. It is safe to say that they influence our shopping habits. How pivotal is the role of media when it comes to a fashion revolution? And I think um, often we, we almost look quickly ahead, but we forget to enjoy what's happening right now. And I really do believe that we are at the right place at the right time. Um, and and, and we, should, we should take full opportunity of what's happening around us. And when not only it's that energy of the students, but the young designers, the, the ones who are already doing something, there's that shift or that desire to change and to really make um, their voices heard, which I don't think it has been ever done in the past. And to see that, I mean, we see it constantly in the magazine and hopefully we can share it, um, but it is super exciting and it's not only in South Africa. I made it my mandate to really support local designers, not only because we are passionate about local fashion and because there's incredible talents to celebrate, but also because it made sense for our readers. I don't think you can force anyone, and I certainly don't want as a magazine to force anyone to buy somewhere more than another, but at least to give, to educate our readers so that they understand, that there is an understanding of why it is important to support local fashion and, and to maybe strike a balance. Why we should support local. So the obvious thing is you support your own friends and your own family and that's essentially what we're talking about in South Africa. But it's not about that only because it's, it, it's not simply that you support local because you want to promote local enterprise, which of course we do, but there's another reason entirely and that is that local is so good now. Fashion is getting better and better in South Africa. We've got so much talent. The advantage of what, what's happening with social media now is it democratizes communication. And I'm all for anything that democratizes communication, democratizes fashion, democratizes any experience. Um, because I don't think these things should be the domain of some little elite, some cream at the top. It should be available for everybody. The future of fashion designers in South Africa. Um, I came by this title of Trashism. And it's really just working on the idea of, of fast fashion, um, clothing industry, the 
the way everything is um, done so for this week and um, how there's different aspects to that, there's, there's waste involved, um, it affects industry and um, workers' rights, um, all of those things and um, yeah I, I wanted to look at that from various perspectives and, and um, yeah, hopefully get people to ask questions about it. What, what does it mean to be able to um, buy a new, a new um, range every week? Or you've got to go to the West and be blessed by Kanye West and then come back and have your brand like put on the back of a taxi and then you know you've really made it. You know? And um, I think I'd really like to challenge that where you know, designers and consumers should really look at uh, what we have in this country culturally. Uh, we have such a rich heritage and so much um, fuel for good design. The future of fashion for South Africa is looking good. I just feel that um, local designers just need to be supported even more by, by the citizens of South Africa. Instead of supporting internationals and international designers, not even international designers, but rather all of the influx that we're getting from overseas. Obviously because of the, the clothing is much cheaper, but I feel like supporting local designers will help improve the future of fashion for South Africa. Magens is Afro-vintage, African in origin, but inspired by the climate, the geography, the music, and the spirit of South Africa. The core group decided to focus on the international market and ran the line out of Paris. This was followed by a total restructure that took them five years. They moved their head office to Cape Town and launched their first sneaker collection in 2013, both in South Africa and parts of Europe. I guess when you have Africa in your soul, it's hard to let go. In the fashion world, um, <clears throat> we still had uh, some issues with uh, local retailers. So the people felt it uh, uh, and the people could experience what's happening, but the retail stores and the owners of the retail, the guys who made the call uh, on the retail level just didn't know about it. So most of them uh, were sort of older, so they couldn't really feel that new, <clears throat> that new energy, that new vibe that came in. So eventually we just left. So we had some stores in South Africa, that were our own stores, concept stores. And we left because in, in Europe and uh, Japan and Vietnam and uh, Canada and so on, we, we just immediately experienced the love and they, they really felt it because they knew what was happening here. Sure. So we expressing that sort of uh, newness, that freshness throughout the brand and um, because it's about uh, South Africa and it's about uh, the hope that our forefathers like Biko, uh, uh, Subukwe, uh, Tata and all those guys uh, sort of installed in us and in our culture. Um, but then um, we manufactured in Asia, in, in Vietnam. So we thought, look, to be, because it just became so big, so quick, uh, that we had to restructure the whole brand. And with that, we thought, look, the best thing to do is to go back to Africa, go back to where we're from, and start to manufacture in Africa. And that would be real, and it'd be more real to us. Sure. But the industry here was not uh, really uh, ready or geared up for and skilled in that way because South Africa mostly were sort of on a Chinese model uh, uh, where you, everything is about price and not quality and not high end and so on. So they weren't that those skills so we had to develop that. So we it took us about we thought it's going to be two three years but it took us about seven eight years before we could really come back and say okay now we're starting to manufacture in Africa and do everything in Africa. And uh, so that's uh, very exciting for us to, to, to be back. But we're very excited about, about the future. It's as if there's a, a, a freshness, uh, almost like a, a revolution in the manufacturing side of, of, of South Africa, but also Africa. When it comes to sustainability, it's easy to place the blame on unethical brands and polluting factories. But to make the clothing industry anywhere near sustainable, the responsibility is not only with the manufacturers, retailers and brands. The responsibility is also with us, the consumers. Fashion Revolution simply seeks to add a voice for the workers in the garment industry by asking a simple yet profound question. Do you see me?
do you hear me? And this is what the hashtag who made my clothes is all about. Do you know where your clothes come from? Take the time and read the care label. Get inquisitive. It was Mahatma Gandhi who said very poignantly, be the change that you wish to see in the world. I hope that you will add your voice. It is simple. People matter. We remember. We learn.